Okay, let's do tool animation. We got dynamic interference detection, intelligent animation. Change my shaded to shaded with edges. Set my press stroke, my stripper travel, and my strip lift, and hit play. Let's turn this up first, then hit play. And note that uh, this is the first time that we've pressed that icon since we started this design. There's nothing to get set up. You can start the animation at any point whatsoever. It definitely doesn't doesn't need any setup whatsoever. A lot of people ask us that because they've set things up manually. Look at this. We can just walk through it as if you were hitting the palm buttons on the press. Inching it through the die. And again, the forming is graphical, of course, as you can see. This is the important part below. The dynamic interference detection. We look at um, we're going to bring the die down till the strip makes contact. And we're going to advance the material through the die. And we close the die. Now this doesn't replace SolidWorks interference detection. We still strongly recommend... What do we have here? Oh, okay. We recently started, uh, let's change this to hidden so we can see it better. We've recently started adding the type 1, type 2, etc. Danley pins, so the washer is interfering with the bushings. That's what we've got going on here. That's fine. Doesn't hurt anything. But these other plus signs, there's an issue there. So that's what we're looking for with interference detection and oh, when we feed it we're not lifting high enough and what do we have here when we're closed let's zoom in on that oh I completely I've never taken this die this far and I never caught that before that insert needs to be cleared out Okay, let's do that. So what I was saying was, show only the lower. This doesn't replace SolidWorks interference detection. We'd still recommend you to do that as well. But we've got dynamic interference detection. So we can see the whole assembly moving and look for interference between assemblies and as the strip is progressing through the die. Let's offset that. Just a little bit because we don't have much room there at all. In fact, we'll have to put a radius at the bottom of that opening or it could be a chamfer, whatever. Okay. And let's put a fillet at the bottom of that. Say a sixteenth radius. That's stronger. Okay. And show the strip in there again. Zoom normal to without zooming out. Cool logo press tool. 
and let's put this clearance actually that's going to be the form this is where we need the clearance so we'll offset that again the amount isn't terribly important when you get that close to the tangency point and we did our cut extrude and now we're going to pattern it select it out of the tree and do a linear pattern and select the direction the progression need to flip that not that one wait a minute nope click on the other one and then we have to deselect that one so we have to skip an instance skip it not deselect it Okay, show the strip again. Show the whole tool. And let's save and rebuild. And let's do tool animation again. And we'll change this to 540. And we'll skip playing it. We'll just hit the interference detection. and again the material is moving through the die and we're looking for interference that can save a substantial amount of money catching that when things don't feed right and having to butcher up the die etc okay so you've still got our issue in the open condition of course which really isn't an issue and we've got this yet what is this change to hidden Ah oh, yes, we've not put that form punch in yet. Okay, so we're good. Other than that form punch we need to add. And let's just look at the animation run once more. Let's reposition a little bit so we can zoom in on it some. Change to shaded with edges. And uh, hit play. And this is running very, very slow, obviously. We have the ability to speed it up by dragging the slider. We have to stop it first. And let's look at it towards the end here. And we can still go faster than this. Not 120 strokes a minute, though. Thanks. See you in a bit.